Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, and welcome to another episode of Model Railway Basics. Today's video is all about ballasting, and this is a step that some people can get a bit scared by. After all, you're covering your track in tiny little stones and then spreading glue all over the place, so if you're a beginner, it's understandable why that might be a bit nerve-wracking. Luckily though, there's actually not that much to worry about as long as you use a bit of common sense. And if you're still feeling nervous after watching this video, well, there are other options too. For example, you could use a ballast mat or even just foam inserts where you slot the track in and away you go. In this video though, I won't just be showing you how to ballast your track, I'll also be sharing some tips on how you can weather it too. Now, this is a bit of a time consuming process, but I do think it makes all the difference and it'll really help your track to stand out. Or rather, blend in. You know what I mean. Anyway, as always, do feel free to adapt the techniques I'm about to show you in whatever way works best for you, and don't forget that'll make your layout feel even more unique. With that said, there is a lot to cover in today's video, and it's quite an exciting one, so let's get to the actual modelling, shall we? So before we get into ballasting, this is a great time to do a little bit of weathering to the track itself. The rails are quite shiny, and while we need to keep the tops clean so that locos can pick up power, the sides of the rails would get more dirty over time. So let's take some brown paint. I'm using Sleeper Grime from Rail Match, and I'm just using a thin brush to paint this all over the sides of the rails. You don't need to worry about being too exact here. If some gets on the top of the rails, we can wipe it off later with a bit of tissue. And if any goes on the cork or the baseboard below, it doesn't matter because we'll be covering that up in a minute as well. Don't forget to paint the insides of the rails too. Now if like me you have a portable layout that can be viewed from multiple angles, then really you need to paint both of the outsides of the rails and both of the insides. If however your layout is fixed to the wall, then you're unlikely to ever be able to see it from the opposite side, so you might be able to get away here with not painting the sides that face the back. And when you've painted all the sides, use a tissue to wipe away any excess that may have found its way onto the top of the rails. Moving on, the plastic that the sleepers are made from is quite shiny, so now that we've finished painting the sides of the rails, we'll use the same colour on the sleepers. This is a matte paint, so it just tones down the shiny plastic and makes it feel a bit more realistic. Again, you don't need to be too exact as the sleepers are already brown, we just need to take away most of the shine and add a bit of variation as if dirt and grime has built up over the years. With that complete, it's time for the final weathering step, which is to add some rust colour to the chairs that hold the rails in place. For my rust colour, I'm using another rail match paint and this one is called Light Rust. As you can see, it looks very bright, but it does tone down when it dries, especially if you blend it in a bit. All I'm doing here is adding a tiny amount to each chair with a brush, and then moving on to the next. When I've got a few done, I just go back over and blend the paint in by spreading it around a bit. Obviously this does take quite a while, even on a small section of track like this, but it is much easier to do all this before we ballast the track. Remember, you don't want it to look too uniform either, so there's plenty of freedom to experiment here and come up with your own techniques to get the results you want. With all the weathering done, you can see our track is starting to look a lot less new now, so finally it's time to start the actual ballasting. Now in this tutorial, I'm using Woodland Scenic's Medium Grey Blend, and this large bottle costs me about 10 to 12 pounds, and it'll last a good while. There's lots of different brands and colours out there, so it's really worth having a look around to see what you like and what works best for the location of your railway. The Woodland Scenics bottle does have a shaker, but personally I like to decant a small amount into a cup just so I don't accidentally dump the entire bottle all over one area of the track. With the ballast now in the cup, just tip a small pile over a short section of track. You'll be surprised just how far a small amount will go, so start off fairly conservative and you can always add more later if you need to. Then using a brush, just start spreading the ballast out. It's best to focus on a small area at a time. Here for example, I'm only worrying about the space between the rails and making sure the ballast goes into all the gaps between the sleepers. Then gradually you can come back and use the same process as before to add ballast down the side of the track. 
If you have your track sitting on a layer of cork, then this will also create a nice shoulder for the ballast, which mirrors what you would see on the real railway. The ballast is now all roughly in position, but the edge is looking a little bit messy. If you want to tidy this up, sweep the brush along the baseboard on the outside of the ballast and that will create a nice clean edge. Finally, in reality, the ballast wouldn't sit on top of the sleepers as the vibrations from passing trains would cause it to fall off. So before we glue our ballast down, just check it over with a very fine brush and move away any particles that are sitting on top of the sleepers. With that done, it's now time to set the ballast in place. And the most popular way to do this is using a mix of 50% PVA glue, 50% water, and then a few drops of washing up liquid too. The water will make the glue nice and runny, while the washing up liquid helps break the surface tension so that it all seeps through the ballast. Before we put the glue on though, I found it helps to spray the track with water first. For this, you'll want a spray bottle that produces a nice fine mist so you don't move the loose ballast. I'm actually using an empty cologne bottle that I had lying around, but you don't need to use something this fancy. Wet the track using the spray bottle, and then it's time to add the glue. I found the easiest way to do this is to use either a syringe or a pipette. Draw up some glue into the syringe, and then literally flood the track, and you'll see it starts to seep through the ballast. This looks quite drastic, and it's easy to worry that you've ruined all your hard work, but don't forget that the glue will dry clear. Continue working along your track until everything is covered in glue. Don't worry about the tops of the rails either, as we can easily clean the dried glue off later. The ballast needs plenty of time to dry, so you'll almost certainly need to leave it overnight and perhaps a bit longer too. I came back a couple of days later just to be safe, and you can see the ballast is now completely hard. Not only does the ballast look great, but so does the weathering we applied at the start of the video. The rail sides in particular having been painted brown make the track look a lot finer, which is a nice bonus if you're using Code 100 track like I am. While you could technically do this weathering after you've ballasted the track, it's much easier to do before and I think you get a better result that blends in better too. And that's how you ballast track on a model railway. It seems a bit scary at first, but actually when you break it down it's quite simple really, so I do hope this tutorial has helped you. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to see more videos in the future. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!